Hello and welcome. <laughs> In this part, we're going to look at uh, the other two situations where derivatives arise. Uh, the first being geometry. So example two says, how fast is the area of a circle changing with respect to the radius when the radius is five centimeters? And to start, we're gonna write the formula for the area of a circle. So can you say what the area of the circle formula is? You said pi r squared? That is correct. Now if we wanna know how fast this area is changing with respect to radius, that means the derivative of the area function with respect to radius. In other words, we can write it as dA dr. The derivative is the rate of change of the function. It's the instantaneous rate of change of the function. So if we want to figure out how this area function is changing as the radius changes, that is the derivative. And we can again represent this as dA dr. Just like we wrote dy dx, uh, so dy over dx, for the rate at which y is changing with respect to x. Here in this specific case, we can write dA over dr, so dA dr for short, um, to represent how fast area is changing with respect to radius. And to take the derivative of the area function, uh, we can use the power rule. I mean, after all, we have uh, this pi coefficient, and so when we take the, so that is a constant multiple that can be taken out of the derivative. So then we can focus on the r squared and the derivative of r squared with respect to r will just be 2r. Another way we can write this is then 2 pi r. Derivative of r squared is 2r times the pi gives us 2 pi r. Now it says uh, find the, how fast the area of the circle is changing with respect to the radius when the radius is five centimeters. Uh, well, that just means that we need to plug in r equals five. And this is how you would uh, write plugging in r equals five into that derivative using Leibniz notation. So we'll just plug in five and we get 10 pi. Now the units for this are going to be the units of area over the units of the radius. Now, the only units we have here are a radius of five centimeters. So we know that at least for r, that's in centimeters. So then for a, that's gonna be in square centimeters. So we're gonna write this rate of area per uh, unit of radius as square centimeters per centimeter. Seems a little bit strange because you might think, why not just cancel those two units of centimeters? but you wanna write the units of area on the top, which is square centimeters, per the units of uh, radius on the bottom, which is centimeters. Okay. So the last example here is uh, density. And uh, the uh, setup is suppose you have some kind of wire or some kind of rod uh, where the length is L, capital L, and the mass is little m. Um, so it says if the mass is evenly distributed, then the linear density we can calculate by doing the total mass divided by the total length. Now the symbol there that's used is called rho. I'll label it here, rho. And sometimes rho is used for density. Another symbol that's sometimes used for density is a delta. Oops, that was a terrible delta. There's a better looking delta. So you might see rho or delta used um, in, in uh, different books. But here we're using rho for density. And units of, of density here might look like um, kilograms per meter, for example, where mass is in kilograms and uh, length of the rod might be in meters. Now, what we're talking about here is linear density. So there are other kinds of density. There's area density, volumetric density, all different kinds of, of densities out there, but we're talking about linear density because we're taking the, the mass here and dividing it by a length, uh, so something uh, linear, like a length. Now, that would be the case if the mass were evenly distributed. Then at any part of the rod, the dense, linear density would be the same. But what if the mass is not evenly distributed? 
So what if it's heavier on one end and lighter on the other end? So suppose we have a function that represents the mass of the rod at any given point along the rod. So we're going to call that uh, m of x. That's going to uh, give us the mass from the uh, one side of the rod all the way out to uh, the other to another part uh, of the rod. So in the picture here, m of x, uh, this would be like m of 6 in the picture actually, um, that would be the mass of the rod from this x value of 0 to the x value of 6 if you were lying your rod along a number line. Um, so based on, on this information, how can we determine uh, the linear density at any given point on the wire? That's what we're asked here. Well, uh, let's say that we start off at just some x value and go over to some other x value. So we're just looking at this piece of the rod right here. So we'll call this x and we'll call this uh, x plus h. So x plus a little bit. Now the, the length of this rod is going to be h, right? The length of this rod will be h. So length is going to be just h. Um, and then the mass of the rod we can figure out by taking the mass from um, 0 to x plus h minus the mass from 0 to x. In other words, we can take m of x plus h minus m of x to get just the mass of this little piece of the rod. So knowing that, so, so the mass here is going to be m of x plus h minus m of x. So knowing that, knowing the mass and the length, we can calculate uh, the density, roughly speaking, of that rod. This is a kind of an average density of uh, this piece of the rod. Average density. Uh, one way we could write it is delta m over delta x. So this uh, represents the change in the mass, so like the mass of just a little piece um, over the length of that little piece, the change in the x value. Uh, but again, as we figured it out here, it's m of x plus h minus m of x, that's the mass of that little piece, divided by h, which is the length of that little piece. Make that m a little better. Uh, well, that's an approximation for what the density is at the point x because, um, you know, x is pretty close to that little little piece right there. Um, and, it, and it does represent the average density over uh, a certain length of that rod. But what if we want the, the linear density at x itself? So what we could do is we could shrink h down to zero so that those average densities are getting closer and closer to the density at x equals x, whatever x is. So we can write the density at x using our new concept of limit, shrinking h down to 0. Uh, we can write is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of these average densities. But when we sit down and, and look at this and, and kind of see what this uh, reminds us of, hopefully this reminds you of the limit of the difference quotient. This is the definition of the derivative of a function. In this case, it's the definition of the derivative of m. <laughs> that was the squiggliest prime ever. So here the derivative just pops up out of thinking about uh, how we would find the density at a particular value x. Um, the density is just the derivative of this mass function, this mass so far function. This thing that we just found is the linear density at x. Another way you could write that would be dm dx which is reminiscent of the delta m over delta x that we were writing over here. That's why I wanted to write it this way so you can, you can see it's, it's related. 
so that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a place where um, you may not think that the derivative is going to rise and it just pops out of uh, the analysis. All right, so then, uh, for example, three, it says the mass of a wire from the left end of, uh, to, to a point x centimeters to the right is the square root of x grams. Uh, find the linear density when x is equal to three centimeters. Now that we've done all that analysis, uh, all we have to do is write what the mass function is which is given to you, it's the square root of x. Then calculate the derivative of that mass function, which is linear density based on what we just talked about. And uh, here you're gonna get one over two square root of x. Remember that you can take the square root of x, rewrite it as x to the half power, and then take the derivative using the power rule. And when you clean it up, you'll eventually get one over two square root of x. Then, um, plug in the x value that you're wondering, you know, what is the linear density at that x value? And you get one over two square root of three. And the only last thing here is that the units will be the units of mass, which are given as grams, over the units of, um, of length, which are centimeters. And that's it. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in a future video.